Hey everybody, Rose Matter here, and welcome to part 6 of my Umineko Let's Play. In the last episode, the gauntlet has been thrown down as Maria apparently got a letter from Beatrice announcing, you know, the game is afoot, and in order to get her gold and all the power that comes with the family name of uh, Ushiromiya, Certain things have to be done, and certain uh, stipulations have to be carried out, mostly involving murder. Uh, so there was that thing at the end, too, with uh, Battler's dad saying, like, oh, I have a feeling I'm going to die tonight. And then there's that whole thing, the revelation of uh, George and Shannon in a relationship, and he basically proposed to her. And that's a death flag right there, I feel like, whenever whole thing where he's like, let me know tomorrow. Uh, if you say yes or not, I, I have a bad feeling that Shannon's going to get killed and maybe some other people might as well. So we're going to see uh, if I'm right. So let's uh, jump into it and let's see what happens next. Shannon entered the entrance hall to the mansion with a tottering gaze. Her chest was filled almost to bursting point with a mixture of exaltation and uncertainty that she couldn't easily describe. After stopping for a second in front of the servant room to take a deep breath and calm her heart, she opened the door. Inside, Goda, who had been ordered to take the midnight shift at the mansion tonight, was absorbed in an old worn-out crossword puzzle magazine. He looked up for an instant to see whether one of the family had come, but when he realized it was a fellow servant, he returned to his puzzle, as if nothing had happened. Ah, <laughs> そろそろ閉じまりの見回りに行きたかったのですが、Look at that face on Goda. I, I never really liked this guy from the start. And then it's just like, as you see more interactions, it just seems like he just pushes the other servants under the bus, makes them do his tasks while he gets to show off to the family. Like, he wants to stay here so he can jump when the family asks him for stuff that so he can be like, look at how good I am. It's like he he knows the other servants have been here longer, so he's trying that much harder to, I guess, be like, look at how awesome I am and be praised for it. Oh. Hi. Shannon felt a twinge of annoyance. Despite the fact she had come here to help out as a favor, she was being forced to do the job of the person actually on duty, so it were natural. Yeah! He seems to do that, he's just... And then, like, when he threw Shen under the bus when he knew that the tea was coming late, so he had her send it out so he wouldn't look bad. Furthermore, after one-sidedly forcing that task on her, Goda had once again gone back to his magazine and had become immersed in his crossword puzzle. I feel like anybody who's worked a job has worked with people like this. It's like they suck up to the bosses and they push the work on to other people, but because, you know, they're a kiss-ass, you know, the bosses won't reprimand them, or, like, if you go to them and be like, Hey, uh, we're not being shared, like, they work equally. They're gonna take the kiss asses side. Ugh. Goda, so slimy. For the time being, as a sign of respect for her elder, Shannon bowed her head and she left the room to make the rounds. Getting a little angry had enabled her to bring the airy sensation she had been feeling until now under control a bit. Besides, she couldn't show this kind of face to Genji and Cannon. Until her heart was able to calm down, she wanted a little time to herself, and maybe going around the mansion wasn't such a bad way to do that. Is she gonna find a body? I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for people to start dying. <laughs> From the dining hall, she began to hear the tumultuous voices of the family's discussion. Someone would speak at great length and would then be opposed by someone else. That rebuttal would continue in a very long, drawn-out fashion until opposed by yet another person. That kept on repeating. It was as though their displeasure was seeping out through their voices. She had been told to go to the guest house, so it would be bad if she was discovered by Kraus. Thinking that, Shannon quick-footedly slipped by the entrance to the dining hall. Then inside the mansion controlled by darkness, she began to check the house was all closed up, following a prearranged route. 
She walked down the hall, checking that each window was closed. Oh, I wonder if she's going to find a window open, like they said with Beatrice, where it's like, you know, sometimes we'd do the rounds and we'd find that a door that we thought was closed would be opened, and vice versa, or windows. On Rokunjima, there were no humans other than the family, so in actuality, closing up wasn't that terribly meaningful of a task. Oh, she's totally going to find something. Until Natsui had scolded them that this attitude was careless, closing up had been customary in the Ushiromiya family. Or had not been customary, sorry. The metal fixtures on the completely chilled windows were freezing, and every time she went to check on them, one by one, it felt like the glow in her heart seemed to cool down. <laughs> oh yeah, here we go. Just then, she thought she saw something flickering across the hall. Flickering? Something like that shouldn't be visible beyond the darkness of the hall. Although she thought it was probably her eyes playing tricks on her, she killed her breathing for a brief moment, and grasping a curtain, she fearfully gazed into the center of the hall. However, other than the occasional crack of thunder brightening the hallway, she was unable to glimpse any flicker again. It must have been her imagination after all. Maybe because she couldn't calm her heart, she saw something that didn't even exist. Shannon resumed checking the windows. However, in the back of her mind, a certain unnerving possibility had been resurrected. It was that which had been passed down amongst the servants who served the Ushiromiya maid family, that ghost story, in which the mansion had different masters of the day and the night. In which the master of the night, Beatrice, would sometimes fly around the mansion in the form of sparkling butterflies. Come to think of it, hadn't Kenan Kun said that he had once seen it for himself? He got sulky when I didn't believe him, and told him he was just seeing things. Could it possibly? Really? The roar of the thunder gave no answer. Alright, are we gonna see Beatrice for realsies? Is she gonna come out of the painting? What's gonna happen here? This painting moves, I'm gonna flip. It's gonna be too freaky. <laughs> I'm just staring at it, I'm waiting. Okay, I was like waiting for something like a, her face to shift or something. Still waiting, still waiting for something to happen in that painting. Okay, all right. Shows like something's gonna be happening soon. Ooh, the second day. This is very- this is giving me, like, Majora's Mask vibes. The sacrifice chosen by the key. I mean, come on, right there? That's foreboding. Genji once again tightened his bow tie and looked outside through a crack in the curtains. 
Maybe the rain had died down a tiny bit since the previous night, but it didn't look like the thick rain clouds were planning to let any trace of the morning sun get by. And the morning was dim and far from refreshing. Cannon finished checking his appearance and exited the washroom. In a normal schedule, it was rare for anyone to have to suffer going straight from the midnight shift to a morning shift. It was a special system for just the two days of the family conference. But then, as long as the typhoon didn't leave today, the relatives' stay on this island would last until tomorrow. Cannon thought it was best to be prepared for the special schedule to be extended one more day. The two of them left the guest house, opening their umbrellas. The Rose Garden had been devastated by the wind and rain last night. Even though they had spent several days making it beautiful to welcome the guests, it had only taken one stormy night to ruin it. Cannon sighed. The two headed for the mansion. They were supposed to meet up with Goda and prepare breakfast. Goda was such a perfectionist, he would undoubtedly have been up for quite some time already, and now be in the middle of preparing a breakfast both exquisite and as elegant as glasswork. They reached the overhang by the entrance to the mansion and folded up their umbrellas. Genji took from his pocket a bundle of several keys and used it to unlock the front door. There was nothing on Rokunjima outside the Ushiromiyo family mansion, so there, was never, there never used to be a custom of locking up. However, Natsu had ordered it be part of their duties to lock up the mansion from around midnight to early morning. Yeah, what's going on with Natsu? He's being very... Maybe, maybe she believes in Beatrice, so she wants to be extra cautious, or she's just a paranoid person. And then locking in the early morning was to be done by the servants who had the morning shift. Since Goda would begin the preparations for breakfast as soon as he woke up, this task was to be undertaken by Genji and Kenan. Silence had fallen in the mansion, giving the impression that the mansion itself was still asleep. The two of them split up and began opening the curtains throughout the mansion. If the curtains remained closed, the inside of the mansion would be unable to shake off its gloom, as if it hadn't yet managed to escape the previous night. Cannon, following a well-versed procedure, went around the mansion, opening one window after another without having to retrace his steps once. Even with this horrible weather, by opening the curtains, it began to feel just a little bit more like morning. While doing that, he passed in front of the kitchen. Even though he hadn't yet smelled anything, his empty stomach started aching in anticipation of the scent of Goda's much bragged about cooking. <laughs> oh, what's this? He tried to greet Goda, who he thought would be preparing the meal inside the kitchen, but Goda was nowhere to be seen. Oh! What? This is... hmm, is Goda already down? The kitchen was darkly lit, never mind the curtains, the ventilation fan wasn't even spinning. It was still cold in the room without a hint of a flame, and of course, no preparations for breakfast were taking place. So he was left alone in the servant room in the mansion, and that's the last place we saw him. We'll see. Although it must not be allowed to happen, maybe Goda had overslept. Servants are humans, too. No, they're not. They're furniture, apparently. They can sometimes fail to wake up or something and be late as a result. In the rare case of that happening, it was the virtue of a servant to casually smooth the situation over so as not to cause an unsightly scene, and to make sure their masters never even noticed such a mistake happened in the first place. Cannon took up the receiver of the phone fitted to the wall and dialed the extension number for the room where the servant slept. <sighs> he couldn't hear the characteristic- Ooh, it got cut? He couldn't hear the characteristic sign of a dial tone. Cannon tried picking up the receiver again, but even so, he couldn't hear the usual dial tone. He tried dialing again, but it had no apparent effect. Could it be the lightning last night had caused a mechanical fault and broken the internal telephone lines? The equipment at this mansion was all worn out. Cannon finally understood that even the smallest thing could have caused it to break down. Cannon gave up trying to wake up him up with the phone and dashed off to the room where the servant slept. Ooh, what are we gonna find? What are we gonna find? How long had she slept until... How long had it been since she had awoken and started stared lazily? How long had she slept until... How long had it been since she had awoken and started lazily staring up at the ceiling? That vague sense of awakening was Natsui's usual morning experience. Her sleep was always light, and she wouldn't even have been able to sleep at all without medicine. 
To Natsui, sleeping was definitely not a happy thing. When she looked outside, she saw it was still pouring. If she hadn't sensed a tiny amount of light, she might have mistakenly thought it was still last night. She herself was one of the hosts, so she mustn't wake up later than her guests. Urging herself on, she raised her body up, which still hadn't completely recovered from yesterday's weariness. While she was inside this room, no one would torment her. Her headache wouldn't get any worse than it already was. This room was her only fe uh, peaceful space. So when she left, it meant returning to the world of her husband's siblings probing each other's minds. Then it wouldn't, w then wouldn't it be better to just stay locked up in this room forever? Natsui smiled bitterly at this fantasy. She was starting to sound like Kinzo. Even though most of the time she would call Kinzo names for staying locked up in his own room and taking no notice of anyone, the truth was she actually longed to do so herself. Natsui gave her head a small shake, and her fantasy was replaced by the reawakening of her usual headache. I assume they're going to go into what's this headache, like it could just be a chronic thing she has, or it could be something else. When she reached for the doorknob, trying to leave the room, her hand touched the scorpion charm she had hung from it before going to sleep the previous night. It was Maria's charm that Jessica had given, had given Natsui. If she remembered correctly, Jessica had said something about it having the power to repel magic, and that she should hang it from her doorknob. Maybe it was thanks to the charm that at least this room had been protected from her husband's sibling's malice. As she thought this, her mood began to get a little more cheerful. Then Natsui remembered. That's right. Last night, I promised Jessica I would give her a charm of my own in exchange for this one, didn't I? Natsui opened a drawer of her dresser and took out an antique accessory case she treasured ever since she was a child. Inside, there were many small objects that Natsui had thought were valuable at the time. From amidst those, she pulled out a red pouch. Inside was a small, round mirror about 10 centimeters across. It looked quite old, but the design on the back of the mirror was very ornate, and it felt like something with historical value. At the very least, it looked much more effective when compared to the other charm, which looked like a plastic scorpion key holder. She had heard that this mirror was a spiritual mirror to ward off evil spirits, and she had been given it specifically by her grandmother when her grandfather's mementos had been distributed. It had been believed since ancient times that strange powers dwell within mirrors. Most likely, the way they reflect light created a belief they also deflect misfortune and malice in the same way. Natsui returned the mirror to its pouch. It would probably be a fitting object to hand over to Jessica. Just as she was placing it in her pocket, the sound of someone knocking on the door suddenly echoed throughout the room. Hi. No servant had ever come to her this early in the morning, especially not directly. Oh, is this in relation to Goda? Maybe something bad had happened. For example, maybe some fatal oversight had been made during the preparations for breakfast, and the household would be put to shame in front of the guests or something. Not so he breathed out slowly, as if getting a head start on the troubles she was surely about to be told of. When she opened the door, Genji once again said a morning greeting to her while bowing deeply. Natsui tentatively responded. So here's another thing. Here's the the internal lines are dead, so we can't call each other with people can't call each other within the mansion. So it's going to be harder to place where people are or get a hold of them. This is definitely going to have to come in to play at some point. It already is. It seems like. それは面倒になりましたね。修理は可能ですか？残念ながら故障箇所がわかりません。後で業者を呼んで修理させたいと思います。ということはこの台風が過ぎるまでは修理不能ということですか？つまり客人たちの滞在中はずっと普通ということです
The servants can kind of move about a little bit more, it seems like. I am wondering if there is some sort of, like, underground tunnel system that they can, you know, travel from guest house to the main mansion. But like I said in the last episode, if that were the case, if there was a, you know, typhoon, the servants would just lead people through the tunnels, not make them go out in the rain. But the servants would definitely have the um, best kind of like idea of secret places to hide and things like that. Natsui let out a small sigh of relief. And it's like, also, there's no breakfast. <laughs> she had been prepared for the worst. But a telephone breakdown wasn't the kind of trouble she was worried about. But then, even this would probably be enough to spark sarcasm from Ava. Natsui gave her head a light shake. Uh, about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like how he led with the small thing first, and then it was like, also... This is a thing that's happening, and there's going to be no breakfast, and one of the servants is missing. Natsui was indignant. To her, this was a much bigger problem than the phone's not working. And despite that, this piece of information was the part that had been postponed. Why did everything go well most of the time, and then come to something like this when the relatives were visiting? Natsui placed a hand to her forehead and shook her head sharply. Oh, oh, what? Natsui had exited into the hall and turned around for a second to close the door to her room. Oh, it slammed shut. The unpleasant thing that she saw there silenced her completely. What? What is it? Ooh. It was an unsettling sight, as if someone had dipped their fingers in a dark red liquid and clawed at the area around the doorknob. Oh, shit. As though someone had soaked both their hands in blood and groped at the door and the knob. Like someone had wanted to stage something like that and left this mark as an awful prank. Or maybe somebody was trying to get into the room and that little d dinky little uh, charm that Maria gave actually protected her. This <laughs> Or maybe Goda got stabbed or something and he was running. I don't know why he would try to get to their room. And he was like clawing at the doorknob to try and get in and die. But then there would be blood all over the place. I imagine. <laughs> Who in the world would pull such a childish and disgusting prank? Not so he had a pretty good idea, but of course there was no proof. So even if she pushed the issue, it would just seem as though she were making a fuss about nothing. On the contrary, it would definitely be better for her to say she hadn't even noticed such a prank had been played in the first place. Not so he gave the order to have it cleaned and headed off to the parlor with clacking heels. When Natsui and Genji arrived in the parlor, Ava and Hideyoshi were already there. おはようございます。皆さん。おはよう、夏日さん。朝から胃袋が大喜びで騒ぎっぱなしなんや。本家の楽しみは食事くらいがせいぜいですものね。エバさんも<笑><笑> Natsui returned Ava's gaze, which was fiercely competitive, even though it was early in the morning, with a, a weary expression. Then Kanon jogged in. After bowing an apology to the relatives who were running inside the mansion, he approached Genji and told him something in a small voice. Kanon, Kenan glanced at Genji. It looked as though he had something else to report, but needed to ask Genji whether he was the right person to say it. Genji nodded and decided to give the report himself. 
ゴーダだけではありません。おお、おお、シェネンガンティー。ダンナサマノスオー。おお、シェッ。おお、ダン。シュジンガはい。奥様より先に、ダンナサマニチョウショクノジュンビガナイコトウ、ゴホーコクシオトウモイ。ソレカラ、ダンナサマダケデワアリマセン。Oh、ルドロフサマゴフサイト。わお。ローザサマノスナタモアリマセン。Whoa, Rudolph did say he thought somebody would be killing him that night, and there's blood on the doorknob. Oh my gosh, this escalated quickly. Guest house, Nimo? Yashki Nimo Deska? Oh, hi. Guest house, no hair Nimo. Orale Masen. When she heard that Goda alone was missing, she thought he might have slept in or was loafing around somewhere. But when she heard that several of the relatives were also missing, She began to start thinking a little more optimistically. Last night's family conference might have continued all night, and in fact, might still be going on. It would then be imaginable they'd wanted to cool off their heads after being in that stuffy room, and had all gone off on a group walk through the rain. The part about cooling off their heads really sounded like something Krauss would like to say. Probably, Goda had been called to go with them to aid with something. Goda was not a man who lost track of time. He had to have understood that if he did not return, the preparations for breakfast would be hindered. So perhaps, as much as he'd like to leave, the atmosphere would not permit him to, and the conference was continuing in that manner even this very moment. Yes, Natsui thought that to be an extremely persuasive theory. Natsui remembered the illusion she had felt that morning of being sucked into a continuation of the previous night, and upon learning the feeling wasn't just an illusion, she once again, she once again let out a deep, weary breath. Because the banquet of the filthy vultures circling around Kinzo's property was still continuing. Oh, Kata, Tay and Nodokoka, Aruiva Kaigan no Hode, I no Kawarazu, Isan no Hanashi, or Kurikai Stir no Desho. Tony Kaku, Goda or Yobi Modosana Kteva, it's Madame of Choshik no Jimmy got to know him. The Koto Naya, Nisan touch the Hanashi, I want Mother to see Tonka. She had thought that she had spoken in a small voice, but Hideyoshi had overheard her and managed to grasp the situation. Nisa mo Rudolf mo tough, ne? Rosa no baai wa waka saka shira? Watashi tachi, yube no 24 hours sugi ni wa mo nemukute bed ni modorase te moratta nda kedo. But of course, in their minds, they're like, what are they saying when we're not around, you know? Being all paranoid. Tashka ni ano jiten demo, mada Nisa tachi wa netsuro wo kawashite ta wa? Otoko. <laughs> Natsui snorted, her face still blank. Kano, Omote o Sagash de Rashe, Goda o Mitsketara, Suni Modot de Choshok no Jumbi o Surio Tsaina Sai. Kashkomarimasta. Natsinesa, Omote to a Kagira Naiwayo, Oto Sama no Shosai de Koto a Nai Kashira. Naro Hodo, Kanga era and Hanashi and I de. どういう話の流れかはわからんがお父さんの主催に場所を移してお父さんにも混じってもらって議論を続けてるっちゅう可能性は十分あるやろうそのような汚らわしい話題を好んでお父様が書斎へ招き入れることなど考えるあらそうじゃあ仕方ないわね源氏さんとカノン君は申し訳ないけど外を探してきてちょうだい確かに兄さんなら頭を冷やすために外を散歩しようなんて言い出しても不思議はないわたとえこんな天気でもね私はお父様の書斎に行ってくるわひょっとするとそこにいるかもしれないしね客人であるエヴァさんにそこまでのご足労はおかけできません私が行ってきます朝のご挨拶も兼ねてあらじゃあお願いするわねでも朝の挨拶を交わしてくれるかは疑わしいわね。夏日姉さんってお父様とは仲よろしかったかしら。Wait, she's saying were you on good terms, not are you? Does Ava know something we don't? Is is Kinzo already dead? 仲が良いかはわかりかねますが、後ろ家の跡継ぎの妻を許されるだけの信頼を得ていると確信しています。なら。Okay, now Ava's talking again in present terms. お父様とは朝食くらいご一緒したいの。ぜひ降りてきてくださるよう説得してくれないかしら。私たちはすっ
かり嫌われちゃってるみたいだけどそこまで信頼を得ている夏日姉さんの言うことなら聞いてくれそうですものそこまで短歌を切ってお父様を説得できず一人で降りてきちゃったりしたら信頼を得ているなんて二度と言えないかもね<笑>自信はありませんが努力はします夏フェイ responded discouraged However, knowing Kinzo's temperament, she had absolutely no confidence in her ability to bring him out. Ava herself was treating it like a joke, expecting it couldn't be done. Maybe Kinzo would be like, hell yeah, let's do this because Beatrice is here and I'm gonna come out and see this. So maybe, I almost hope for Natsui's sake that Kinzo will come out just to shut Ava up a little bit. But even so, Natsui would lose face if she gave up, said it was impossible for her, and let Ava go instead. Ava's mean spirit and unreasonable demand caused Natsui's tightly clenched fist to shake. When Genji realized this, he, sparkly, he softly spoke to her over her shoulder. Oksama, yoroshikereba, kore wo o m o c h i k u d a s a i Sore wa? Ooh, Genji handed Natsui a sparkling gold key of ornate design. Oh, oh, I wonder if she's gonna find him dead in there. It was the key to Kinzo's study. The study was always lock itself and couldn't be unlocked as long as Kinzo forbade entrance. However, since Genji was especially trusted by Kinzo, he was allowed to carry a key to that door. Until now, Natsui had thought of Genji as a cold servant who worked directly under Kinzo and would never work for her, but it looked like she would have to alter her understanding of him. She wanted to communicate her feelings of thanks, but by then, Genji had already turned his back to her and was walking down the corridor with Kanon. But as Natsui watched them go, the words that reached her from behind were sneering. Natsui left without replying at a swift pace, her heels clacking loudly with every step. After all that excitement the previous night, there was no way anyone was going to wake up soon. George, Aniki, Jessica, and I were snoring loudly on the bed in the cousin's room. But Maria, who didn't join in and who had gone straight to bed the previous night, suddenly and completely opened her eyes. <gasps> As she rubbed her sleepy eyes and looked around, the loud snoring coming from the three cousins continued. For a while, Maria had to think about what had happened. After that, she realized her mother was not with her and quickly got lonely. Maria left the cousins' room, trying to head to the room that had been arranged for her and her mother. Paying no heed to the three who were sleeping soundly, she made a loud slamming sound on the way out. In response, Battler mumbled something, rolled over in his sleep, but it wasn't enough to wake him up. After a while, Maria returned once again, opening the door with a lively bang. Just like a kid, right? Just like no, no thoughts about like, oh, I better be,、uh, you know, quiet when I enter and leave places. <sighs> when she had left the room, her face had been sleepy, but after returning, she now looked discontented. And her mother's missing, right? After that, she climbed up on Battler's bed, which had been happened to be the closest, and started yelling and jumping on it like it was a trampoline. <laughs> After making sure I was awake, Maria jumped over on George and Niki's bed and started bouncing on that too. In that manner, the three of us were all greeted with an extremely pleasant awakening. I feel like this is going to be the last bit of happiness they get for a while <laughs> and lightheartedness. <laughs> でももう少しだけお越し方を優しくしてくれると
完璧だったかなジョージ兄さんは本当に大人だよ尊敬するぜもうすぐ7時なんだなま確かにもう起きてもいい頃だぜ王座おばさんが部屋にいなかったのもう起きてお屋敷の方に行っちゃったのかないないマママーイ kept groaning ooh ooh and looking unhappy It seemed like she wasn't simply lonely because she couldn't find her mother but actually unhappy because her mother wasn't in the place she thought she was and this made her feel like she had been tricked We could have just told her where her mother was. That might have been enough to satisfy her. Unfortunately, as long as we were here, we had no way of finding that out. Oh no, Mari's gonna have a meltdown when she realizes her mom's missing. And、uh, with the exception of,、uh, of George, who had, like, he's gonna know where his mom and dad are. Badler's、uh, parents are gone, or at least her dad's, his dad's gone. I don't know where Kiri is. I think they just said it was Rudolph and Kraus and、uh, Rosa. Maria regained her usual composure, as though her earlier temper had never happened. We got dressed, left the room, and headed for the mansion. The door to the study was once again knocked upon, but there was no answer. He was still sleeping, and she couldn't wake him. If she returned downstairs saying something like that, Ava would be very amused and triumphant. And even aside from the whole Ava issue, there was still the problem that yesterday, during this once a year family conference, he had stayed locked up all day and had still not come out to greet the guests. Even though he was the head, no, especially because he was the head, he couldn't fail to make an appearance. Could she convince him? Natsui、uh, readied herself and, using the key she had borrowed from Kenji, opened the door. A sweet stench that seemed to eat into her brain poured from the narrow opening she had created, and though she was prepared for it, she couldn't help but grimace. Thinking that he might still be sleeping, not so he entered the room quietly. Uh oh, is he, is he dead? Is he dead? No, no, he's up. When she did, Kinzo, already awake, was looking down out of the window. <laughs> Kinzo spoke with his back still facing her. His voice was not harsh but calm, and Natsui was slightly reassured. However, he was at least in a bad enough mood that he'd ignored the sound of all that knocking, even though he'd been awake. Natsui wasn't able to break the tension. People are not able to be found, that's when it's going to be a little bit different. その
そしてそれが親族会議だというなら私がこの部屋を出るほどの価値はない私は忙しいのだ構うでない With his last words came the threat that any further questions would be useless. Natsue realized that adding any further pleas would finally bring his wrath down upon her. It would be annoying to hear Ava sarcastically say she hadn't been able to convince him after all, but there was nothing more Natsue could do. So, this is what I'm saying. Natsue decided to give up. Bowing silently, she made to leave the room before Kinzo's spasmodic temper could fire up. As she did, Kinzo called out to her. Compared to the usual Kinzo, his voice was calm and gentle like it came from another person. Natsuki, Ushiromiya's house is already more than a year ago. Yes, Ushiromiya was called to call her name and call her name. It's more than a year ago. The house was more than a year ago. No, Natsuki was a good one. 成果を捨てることです。私は後ろ宮夏日。帰る家も、懐かしむ家も、すべてはこの後ろ宮の家のみです。It was definitely not, a, not an exaggeration. Such was the level of Natsui's resolve in calling herself an Ushiro Mia. That was why she was so sorrowful that, despite all her effort, it had been fruitless and she was not even accepted by her husband. クラウスが女で。お前がその夫であったなら<笑>いやそれは言うまい。Oh damn, does he have a little bit of respect for her, maybe more so than the other people? Because while everybody's talking about the inheritance, she keeps talking about like, you know, disrespect I'll be talking about this stuff, so maybe he knows that. Maybe he knows that she's trying to like keep them from being disrespectful to Kinzo. <笑>どういう意味ですかお父様。ナツウェイは驚愕。もし彼女の言葉が本当に言われたら、もし彼女の言葉が本当に言われたら、もし彼女の言葉が本当に言われたら、もし彼女の言葉が本当に言われたら、もし彼女の言葉が本当に言われたら、もし彼女の言葉が本当に言われたら、もし彼女の言葉が本当に言われたら、もし彼女の言葉が本当に言われたら、もし彼女の言葉が本当に言われたら、もし彼女の言葉が本当に言われたら、もし彼女の言葉が本当に言われたら、もし彼女の言葉が本当に言われたら、もし彼女の言葉が本当に言われたら、もし彼女の言葉が本当に言われたら、もし彼女の言葉が本当に言われたら、血はつながらずともお父様の娘です後宮家の名誉も栄光もそしてお父様が残されたものも全てこの夏日が必ずや守ってみせますからお前に片欲のわしをまとう資格はない Damn, shoots her down. <laughs> しかし、oh, お前の心には確かに片欲のわしが刻まれている。This is the nicest things he said so far, other than to、uh, Genji. ならばお前は間違いなく、wow. 我が血族で、Damn. 後ろ宮家の栄光を引き継ぐものだ。She's like, can you please just come downstairs and just say that in front of Ava, and then I will never bug you about anything again. <laughs> Wow. Damn, Natsu is gonna be like, nothing can get me down after that. She's like, I'm flying high forever now. Wow. What if this is foreshadowing that the, at the end, Natsui is the one who wins everything and he's calling it right now? Without saying anything more, Kinza remained with his back to Natsui. However, Natsui couldn't help but feel something warm well up inside her that she hadn't felt since long ago, when she had just been a child. Natsui bowed silently to his back and left the room. She's like, My headache is gone. I'm cured. Ara! ちょうどいいタイミングだったわね。Nothing Ava can say is gonna like upset her. お父様の様子はどう？あんまり遅いから様子を見に来ちゃったのよ。When Natsui left the study, she saw Ava climbing the stairs, and their eyes met. Ava smirking unpleasantly, thinking Natsui has just left the room trudgingly after failing to convince Kinzo. However, the way Natsui was now, such a frivolous laugh would not disturb her. She was not permitted to wear the crest on her clothing. 
but she was permitted to wear it in her heart. That would sting for Ava. Ava literally has the eagle tattooed on her to be like, look at how seriously I take this. And Kinzo would probably be like, that means nothing to me. Whereas, like, he told Natsui, like, you're not even a blood relative, but I prob I respect you more than my children. So she spoke calmly, clearly, and confidently with the dignity of the one who would protect the glory of the Ushiromiya family. お父様を説得できなかったんならお父様を説得できなかったんなら素直にそう言えばいいじゃないおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおおお
Not so he, acting as though the release intention had caused a new surge in her headache, left the parlor. Kenan tried to call to her as she left, but Natsui departed swiftly. どうした。まだ何かあるのか。はい。旦那様方のお姿を見つけることはできませんでしたが、その。What? What? What? Kenan sounded evasive. He still didn't know where they were, but maybe he had found something with some relation to that. When Ava and Hideyoshi noticed this exchange of words, they came over. They had probably noticed the slightly strange way Kenan was acting. Whenever that clock is ticking in the background, it's like the chimes in Higurashi are like, Oh, what's going on? Kenan once again hesitated. He wasn't speaking anything like you'd expect from the usually fearless Kenan. Ava and Hideyoshi exchanged quizzical looks at this display. どういうこと倉庫の中に兄さんたちがいたんじゃないのいえ、中はこれから調べます。その鍵を取りに戻ったところなのですが、その… Okay, what is going on here? Kenan dashed off to the servant room and returned with the key. Genji left the parlor saying he would go check, but Ava and Hideyoshi also followed. I feel like this is going to be like a Donkin Ropa situation where we're going to find a body and it be like, a body has been discovered. <laughs> what was this something odd about the storehouse that had caused the usually fearless Kenan to hesitate? I'd be surprised. We're still relatively early and this is a long game. I'd be surprised if we already come across someone dead. It was still pouring outside, but their curiosity over the something that Cannon couldn't talk about won out. While the children made a big fuss watching TV, Cannon and the rest dashed off to the entrance. The Rose Garden storehouse was a place that housed various tools used to manage the garden. It was definitely not a pretty building. Because of its appearance, it had been built hidden in the corner of the Rose Garden. Kenan, Genji, Ava, and Hideyoshi came cutting across the Rose Garden holding umbrellas. They entered a small path just off the Rose Garden, which was not used by those simply appreciating the garden, but only by those maintaining it. As they dashed further along it, the front of the storehouse came into view. It was a very old shed of a storehouse, and compared to the flawlessly perfect beauty of the Rose Garden, it was pretty seedy looking. It was easy to understand why it had been built in a hard-to-see place. Ava and Hideyoshi arrived at the storehouse long after Kenan and Genji. Oh, oh, what, 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 blood? Okay, let's see. When Ava looked at where Kenan was pointing, she was at a loss for words. Noticing this, Hideyoshi also followed Kenan's finger, and was likewise too shocked to speak. The entrance to the storehouse was a kind of shudder, and there, everyone there now understood why Kenan had been unable to find words that could, be, that could describe what he saw. On the shutter, which was completely filthy from being exposed to wind and rain for so long, plastered on it. Blood. E something that looked like a strange, dark red liquid? Mucus? I mean, we didn't verify that the stuff on the doorknob was blood. It could be something else, but... Or maybe it was some sticky paint. Some kind of ghastly substance had been used to draw an indescribably eerie shape. The rain had caused it to drip down in several places like fresh blood leaking from an open wound. There was no longer any point being choosy with words. A ghastly dark red substance meant to look like blood had been used to draw some kind of figure or mark, and uh, intended to suggest something ominous. Two concent uh, concentric, concentric circles were drawn there. Inside them was a design that looked like a cross. The four ends of the cross were widely exaggerated, and it looked like some kind of crust from somewhere around Europe. 
And Beatrice is Italian name, right? So, hmm. Now I'm trying to think, was there anything on her dress that looked- that had that symbol? And the cracks between these shapes, written closely packed together, were some unfamiliar characters. Or possibly symbols. Ooh, let's check Maria's uh, book. She probably has things about, uh, you know, crest and black magic circles and summoning things and stuff like that. With reference to this ghastly shape, drawn with a deep red dripping substance, Hideyoshi's comparison was not unreasonable. これ。Genji remembered he had just previously seen another piece of graffiti, and this, and that it too had been made of a strange dark red substance of the same color as this. That must have been, that's right, he had seen it on the door to Natsumi's room. Kanoku, Sasa to Kono Rakugaki Okeshi de Modorimasho. Tato e so koto wa iye, Jika no Rakugaki wa honto ni haradata shi wa. Ken had squatted in front of the shutter and unlocked it. He then lifted it up with all his strength. A boisterous noise resounded, and the eerie shape drawn with the shutter began to get sucked in through the top as the shutter was raised. At least for the time being, that ominous thing disappeared from the direct gaze, and they all breathed a sigh of relief until they saw all the dead bodies inside the shed. Oh. <laughs> I was waiting for that to happen, where it was like, they'd be like, oh, okay, that's a relief. Whoa, dead body. Thanks to a kid's program they'd come across, Mario was feeling much better. Badler and Jessica were making fun of the kid's program at every turn, cackling. George was enjoying the program, along with, Ra along with Maria. Nanjo sat on the sofa by himself, passing the time by reading quietly. Nanjo's like, this is how I'm going to stay alive. I'm just going to keep out of everybody's business and just act... Like, I'm not even here, just everybody ignore me, and I will get out of this alive, hopefully. They heard hurried footsteps coming from the hallway. They were footsteps from a single person. Did that mean it wasn't the group of four that had just left? Genji was the one who had returned. It was very rare for Kenji, who considered being out of breath a violation of a servant's virtues, to be gasping for air. He had probably come dashing back from outside the mansion. His shoulders were soaking wet, and he didn't have his usual smart appearance. When Genji noticed Nanjo looking at him, he gave a small silent bow and quickly approached him. Oh, maybe there's something what maybe something was inside the shed. Oh. I mean, he's a doctor. Why would they have a doctor come to check something unless something was up? Or maybe maybe he wants Nanjo to check and see if that's blood? As Genji whispered something in Nanjo's ear, Nanjo's face changed color. He stood from the sofa, trying not to be noticed by the children who were still engrossed by the TV, and the two of them rapidly left the parlor, muffling their footsteps. Just as they were leaving the parlor, they came across Natsui, who was pushing a serving cart loaded with a tea set. Genji whispered something in Natsui's ear, and Natsui's face too changed color, shocked. Then, leaving the serving cart where it was, the three of them started dashing towards the entrance. Okay, okay. George noticed them running down the rose garden through the window. There's that ticking clock again. Jessica and Maria also realized that something had happened from the fact that Ava, Hideyoshi, and Nanjo were no longer in their seats. And because the serving cart had been abandoned at the entrance to the parlor.
For some reason, what Battler said sounded extremely indiscreet. But they couldn't deny they were a little insecure and concerned after seeing the adults run off into the rain disregarding their appearance. Jessica's insecure words spoke for all of them. Hey, Maria. Yeah, Maria can tell us what kind of uh, thing that was on the door. Oh, okay, she's not going. Oh no, she's gonna be left by herself. Mari could get up to all sorts of trouble, left alone. Maybe Mari will be possessed by Beatrice when they're gone. She'll go and cause some mischief. I'm surprised Maria wants, wouldn't want to go and check things out. By the time the kids went outside, they had lost sight of the adults who had left earlier. But it looked like Jessica had a pretty good idea of where they had gone and the direction they had been running. Following Jessica, they ran through the rain-soaked rose garden. It felt like the wind suddenly got stronger. The malicious sound of thunder began to ring out like it had the previous night. It felt like something eerie had surrounded the island and was trying to stop them from moving forward. Jessica! What's going on in this Jessica! Just as Jessica had said, a storehouse came into view in front of them. They could also see the adults there. The shutter to the storehouse was open, and several of the adults looked as though they were searching for something. For some reason, only Natsui was outside the storehouse, not even holding an umbrella. She was facing away from them, and it looked like she was hanging her head. The ones who had just left, Genji, Nanjo, Natsumi, and the ones who had been left who had left before them, Kanon, Eva, and Hideyoshi, made this a large gathering of people, but there was absolutely no bustle of activity. When Natsumi realized the children had come, a terrible expression rose to her face, and she ran at them with her arms spread wide. Oh no. Oh boy, something real bad's happened. However, no, because of that, the kids saw that scene which Natsumi was trying to keep them away from. Inside the storehouse, with the shutter wide open, a flickering fluorescent light shone down. And over there, uh oh. Oh, we got a dead body. A body has been discovered. Jessica's piercing shriek rang out. But that was just Jess that was just because Jessica's scream was the loudest. The same thing spilled out of Battler and George's mouth as well. Ava, just like Natsui, spread her arms, with a terrible expression roared at the kids. Georgie! When Natsui had spread her arms, one might have thought she was trying to prevent them from advancing any further. However, right now, that wasn't why Eva was spreading her arms. She was trying to hide that, ser that terrible scene from the kids. Oh, this music, though! It was her mother's heart, trying to protect the eyes and hearts of us children by attempting to block our view of that terrible scene by at least the width of one of her arms. Yep, it's serious now. No more happy times. It's over. Oh, I had seen this kind of cheap scene all too often. In manga, TV, anime, and movies, I had seen it over and over again. This was just... just seeing something appear in real life that I had seen plenty of times before in some of these more sensational movies, wasn't it? That alone shouldn't... Oh, but that suit... Oh, it's the old bastards, isn't it? I get it. Oh, wow. Well, how many sacrifices did they say that you needed, right? There's Uncle Kraus. Wow. And Kiri- Oh my god, they're all dead? Uncle Kraus, kiri -san, Auntie Rosa? What? Oh my gosh, I wasn't actually expecting them all to be dead. I thought maybe one person would be dead. Damn. Oh my gosh. Oh, here it comes. Here comes the mystery. So we gotta figure out time of death. Where were people at the time? Wow. This is, a... this is insane. I was thinking, I was like, okay, it's gonna be a little bit of a slow start. We're gonna have like a, a death here or there. There's like four of them. So Kraus, Kyrie, uh, Rudolph, Rosa. God damn. Yeah. 
ネットのことはいい私は町医者だ検視は専門外だ Damn, here I was being like, oh, I want to get to know these characters more. You know, like, we're starting to explore, like, Rosa's thing, and, you know, like, didn't know too much about Rudolph or、uh, Kyrie or Kraus, and they're just fucking dead. Aunt Natsue caught Jessica in her arms, and Auntie Ava caught George anything. So I was the only one who could approach the entrance to the storehouse. Well, it's a good thing Maria wasn't、uh, there to see it. Oh, if only there had been someone here to catch me, too. Oh, poor Badler. Oh my gosh. I just realized at least George. George is lucky. George has got both his parents still. And Jessica has Natsui, but Badler just like Kyrie and Rudolph dead. No, that's not it. I'm standing here not because the people who would catch me aren't here, because the people who would catch me are right there. This is just got said. It did look like a storehouse used to keep gardening tools a lawnmower and its replacement blades, a grass sickle and a hammer, a saw and some, and some construction tools, piled up potted plants and bags of fertilizer, and treated just the same. The corpses of several people had been laid to rest there. No, had been thrown in there. I could tell them by their clothes. The old bastard and Kyrie san, Uncle Kraus, Auntie Rosa. Further back, Gota san, and. Oh, wow! Oh my gosh, Gota? There's still more of them? Oh no, Shannon? Oh, how many people died? Fucking hell, I can't even count them on one hand. God fucking damn it. I didn't know whether it had been one of these garden tools, which, if used for something other than their intended purpose, could definitely be wielded with a naked brutality. Or whether some horrible tool had been brought in here specifically for this. Whatever the case, the bodies lying about here, each of them had been given an atrocious makeover. This isn't a damn makeover. This is more like their faces have been plowed. Oh my gosh. Their faces were smashed, forced into an expression that a normal person couldn't make even after death. I couldn't tell where the eyes or the nose were, but I could find the mouth, because it was gaping wide, the ridges of the teeth exposed Jesus. The front teeth were missing, and even the cheek that should have been covered with that was all torn up and exposed. Oh my gosh, the stylish makeup he had spent way too much time fussing over for a guy. There's no help at all. ここまでひでえ目に合わされるほどの悪党じゃなかっただろうがよだからキレイさんもさこんな男と付き合うのはやめろって言ったんだあんたまでそこまでの目に合わされる理由は何もねえじゃねえかよなお前顔がねえ顔がねえよクソクソクソクソバトラさんこれ以上を見てはいかんこんな姿をお父さんもお母さんもあんたに見せたいわけがないお父さんとお母さんのためにもこれ以上を見てはいかん死者ってのは安らかに眠る顔ってやつを拝ませてくれるんじゃねえのかよ顔がねえんだよ俺の親父とキリエさんの顔がねえんだよどういう顔して死んじまったのかそれすらもわかんねえんだよなんだよ俺は親父たちのことを思い出す時はこのくちゃくちゃの化け物みてえな顔をいつも思い出せたのかよそいつは最高だぜクソ親父のニヤニヤとした顔を思い出さなくていいんだからよ最高だぜ最高だぜでもよキリエさんの顔くらいはいいだろう綺麗さの悪党じゃねえたまにはムカつくと思ったけどよちょいとかっこいい俺の姉気分だったお人じゃねえかよこりゃねえよこんなのってねえよクロスおじさんなんかまだマシじゃねえか顔面じゃなくて側面だぜ少なくとも顔半
半分は残ってるじゃねえかよまだマシだぜまだマシだぜあ、oh, trying to shut out my reckless words、Jessica tried to fill her ears with the sound of her own screaming。よすんだ、バタラ君、もうよすんだ、もうよすんだ、兄貴、兄貴。He's probably like, you have your parents, shut up <laughs>。Disregarding age and appearance, I fell to my knees, cling to Anniki's waist and sobbing. It was as if I was crying on behalf of everyone there. Representing the feelings of everyone there, I screamed over and over. Damn, 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 damn. Holy shit, <laughs> I can't get over that. Like, this is. This is real, what? Otosa. Taore te irunoa. Kraus oji san. Rudolf oji san. Kirie oba san ni. Rosa oba san. Goda san de. Gonin. Yeah. Oh no. Oh, Shannon. Oh, so George did lose someone, and I totally, I bet she's wearing the ring, isn't she? The body that Hideyoshi was looking down on now was hidden in the shadow of a mountain of random objects, in a blind spot to George who stood by the entrance. So George couldn't tell whose body it was. Therefore, George cursed himself. He cursed that part of him that imagines the worst, and is always right. <laughs> Yeah. Aww. George, aww. George was completely silent. He shook slightly, his lower lip trembling. He wanted to run up to his beloved, screaming and crying, but before rashly running up to her, he mustered up all his strength and asked his father. Oh, maybe he's like, I don't want to see her like that. Aww. Hideyoshi deeply understood the meaning of those words, so he couldn't give George a quick answer. No, he thought that to George right now, that was the only possible sincere and loving response. What George had asked whether, when George had asked whether she was the same, he had meant to ask whether her corpse was the same as the others. Since Hideyoshi hadn't denied it, it meant that the body was just as horrible. I think that's exactly it. You don't want her, your last sight of her to be like that, right? You want to imagine her, you want to remember her as being like, you know, alive and, you know, not torn apart. <laughs> I thought he was I thought he was gonna ask, can you tell me if she's wearing is she wearing a ring? どうして見たらいけないんだよ。お前が最後にシャノンちゃんに会ったのは昨日か。うん。そうか。そのシャノンちゃんは別れ際にお前にどんな顔を見せたんや。素敵な。Aww. After receiving the ring, she was bewildered, even though her heart should have been decided, bashful, and so embarrassed to show him that face that she ran away. That expression was revived in George's mind. So, Nara Shannon chan mo. Sono ego o omae ni nukushitai to nega u hazu ya. Hideyoshi looked down upon Shannon's body lying at his feet. Just like the other bodies, it was in such a horrible state, it would make anyone want to cover their eyes. Half of the face had been smashed off, and no more than half of her expression remained. But that remaining half, soaked red with blood, had been wiped clean. That graceful, smiling face might have peeked out. Only half of it. Damn. Without thinking, Hideyoshi slapped his hand over his eyes. How cruel. If only all of that had been crushed. If they were going to crush it, then he might have been able to deceive George's heart for a while by saying it was just someone else wearing Shannon's clothes. Yet, they had left half the face. It caused the body so much humiliation, and also made it clear that this body was none other than Shannon. How inhumane. How monstrous. 
They're a Hideyoshi's feet. Oh, poor Cannon too. That's his sister. Not really, but a Hideyoshi's feet. Trying his best to burn the image of the remaining half of Shen's expression into his eyes was Cannon. Cannon was not crying. Tears had risen to his eyes, but they did not drip down. He's probably like, furniture doesn't cry. That didn't mean he wasn't feeling as much sadness as everyone else. Losing Shannon, who had lived with him in the gospel house, whom he had loved as a sister, must have been just the same as losing a blood relative. George leaned against the outside wall of the storehouse, sinking down powerlessly. The ring, the ring. Yeah. Oh, this is heartbreaking. Hideyoshi crouched down. As he did, Kenan silently pointed to one of Shannon's hands. Oh, oh. oh I wonder if, uh, did Hideyoshi know that uh, about George and Shannon's relationship? I imagine so, because he knows that he cares for her. それはどっちの手のどの指にあるのかな。と左手の薬指や。そっか。シャノンちゃん、婚約しとったんか。Oh, so I guess he didn't know about their relationship? George! Oh, yeah. Oh, Ava, now is not the time. Is she gonna be all like, she's a servant? She's not, like, she's not good enough for you. Like, Ava! Yeah, right? Ava, come on. Shannon-chan <laughs> Okay, is Hideyoshi playing dumb? Or does he legit, like, not realize? Like, why would George ask that? <laughs> Obviously, it's him. Yeah, I... I have to believe, like, Hideyoshi... Hideyoshi's gotta know that was George. To most of the people here, Hideyoshi was simply disturbed by this extraordinary situation and was blurting out strange things. But to those who really knew the truth about George and Shannon's relationship, everything he said made sense. George stood up. Traces of tears still streaked in his face, but his expression had returned to its usual calm. Jessica sniffled once, and trying to say she was alright, she showed her face to her mother, who had been holding her the whole time. When she faced George again, she once again had on her usual face. Although she still couldn't recover her smile. Badler kept on crouching in front of his parents' bodies. Badler's face was still bright red from the tears, but even though it was forced, he'd at least recovered enough to fake a smile. Kano, you are not here for this long time. You are not here for the children. You are not here for the children. Natsui, unable to take a step into the storehouse, had been standing under the rain this whole time. Maybe she had her own way of grieving, different from Battler's. She realized she had to take on a sense of responsibility, now that her husband was dead. So she gave Kanan those orders. Poor Natsui, she finally had... You know, she felt like she's like... 
got Kinzo's respect, and she was feeling good for a hot minute and now this, but now, now that Kraus is gone, she's like, well, Kinzo said that I'm the one who should be the heir because I'm, you know, I'm the only one who has his respect. Hi. And maybe she's gonna fight even more without Kraus, she's gonna fight even more to be the head of the family. Oksama. Kenan rose silently and turned to face them. His face was pure white, almost as though his own heart had died along with Shannon. There was no life in his expression. If during the course of a normal day he'd been instructed to do a tour of the beautiful Rose Garden, Kenan might have led the way for them, but now there was no distinction between Kenan and the children. They were now just kids of the same age, with the wounds of having lost someone close to them. After seeing the children go back, Natsui gave orders to Genji. Genji. すぐに警察に連絡しなさい。台風が通り過ぎるまでは来られないでしょうか。どうすればいいか指示を与えてくれるはずです。わかりました。防災用の無線機がありますので、それで連絡します。When she heard that, Natsui remembered. That's right, the telephones were out today, weren't they? However, since it had been assumed there could be trouble with the phones on this isolated island, a radio had been installed. I wouldn't be surprised if that got messed with too. And they're completely... Uh, cut off from the outside world. Anyway, let's contact the police and seek their instructions. Everything else can wait. なぜ先生、もうこの場は。どうしようもありませんか。残念ながら私には何もできませんな。わかりました。現地。せめて主人たちの顔を何かで覆ってやることはできませんか。このような姿を晒すことは当人にとっても。<�ughs> Natsui's like, why could it have been Ava? <laughs> Hi. Genji picked up several towers, towels hanging inside the storehouse, where Ava stopped him in a shrill voice. Or when? ちょっと、ちょっと。お待ちなさいよ。ここは犯行現場なんでしょ？なら変に手を加えちゃダメよ。私たちは混乱してて現場に土足で踏み入っちゃったけど、それはきっと警察の捜査の邪魔になったわよ
and it would be normal to think the reason they had been carried to the storehouse was to hide the bodies and delay the discovery of the crime. But that graffiti drawn on the shutter that looked like an eerie magic circle had eloquently indicated the corpses were hidden there. It didn't specif uh, specifically say they were here, but after six people had gone missing, by making such an obvious scribble and even returning the key to open it, it seemed almost as though someone had wanted the corpses to be discovered here. とにかく、一度は犯人が開け閉めをした世情だけでは信用できません。犯人の手からもこの場所を保護する意味で世情を新たにしたいと言っているのです。いい案だと思います。私も賛成です。Genji fished around inside the storehouse and unsealed a brand new padlock which had been inside a small box. 鍵はどうなさいますか？私が持ちましょう。責任を持って。Oh, Ava will probably have a problem with that. Like, oh, okay. Trying to hide something, Natsui? Natsui took the key to the padlock from Genji's hand. After that, they all exited and lowered the shutter. Because of that, the corpses were once again sealed behind that shutter, covered with that gruesome magic circle. Genji crouched down in front of the shutter to fasten the new padlock. In addition to the main lock on the shutter, there's sometimes a place where you can attach your own lock in front of it. This was one of those types. In the midst of the roar of thunder and the pouring rain, the storehouse stood there, ominously. On its closed shutter was the magic circle drawn in a creepy blood-like substance and swallowing up the bodies of six whole people. To Natsui, putting this new lock on may not have been entirely to preserve the scene for the police, but rather, she might have felt like she wanted to shut that mouth for all eternity to prevent any more victims from being swallowed by that eerie demon. So, let's go. So we already, so in one blow, we lost almost half. So who have we got left? We've got Natsui, we've got Ava, Hideyoshi, Genji, Kanon, uh, George, Badler, Jessica, Maria, and Kinzo. So that's ten people. Oh, and Kumasawa, who we haven't heard from in a while. So, hmm. Hmm. Maybe Kumasawa's a little more spry than we thought. Oh. And Nancho. So is that twelve people we have? Genji, I saw the case at Nirendako. Modori must have soon in Luxus. The dolls left the storehouse. The ghastly magic circle drawn on the shutter, still swallowing the six bodies, loomed eerily, occasionally lit up by the lightning. God damn, that was in that was insane. That was insane. Not expecting that. Well, uh, I don't feel like I really need to add anything to that. What the f- What the f- I had a feeling some people were gonna die. I didn't expect almost half the party, half the group to be wiped out all in one go. I thought it was gonna be a little bit more, you know, it was gonna progress, it was gonna escalate, but I guess uh, the epitaph did say, you know, like a lot of people had to die. Um, so, <laughs> all right, well, uh, that's gonna do it for this episode. I am hyped for the next one. Uh, how many more people could possibly die? We're gonna just have to wait and see. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Special shout outs to my top tier patrons Nana, Sparky, Icognito. Matt Goldsmith, Harry Gaziff, and Asborn Kennedy.